This is the absolute worst thing about gardening in the deep south. These look okay. But they didn't all escape, I don't think. Huh? Yeah, that one looks rubbery. <laughs> That's turned to rubber. But the ones that were underneath the grass, they're okay. Potatoes don't look hot though. So, all of these sheets here, we went to the thrift store and we bought bags. And then my son asked them in the back if they had any other sheets they could spare and maybe bag up for us. So we could cover everything again. Because you might think, hey, you know, we live in a very mild climate. Zone 8B. That's a great climate. We got a lot of frost-free days. But there's something really weird to this climate. And that is, when it gets close to spring, the weather starts whipping up and down. It'll go from 80 degrees one day. Middle of the day, it's 80 degrees. You're out in a t-shirt and shorts. And then the next day, it'll drop down into the 60s or so. And then that night overnight, it might be 25 degrees. It's astounding. And what it does, so it really, really messes with your gardening plans. We had about five or six weeks without a single frost. Everything woke up, everything. Mulberries are actually making fruit. We're talking ripe fruit on mulberry trees back there in the field. And the potatoes growing like crazy. And even the persimmons, which usually take their time waking up, they decided well, looks like the weather's great. Let's just wake up and grow. And uh, that's not good because we got 28 degrees overnight. So you might say at this point, well, in your gardens, why would you bother planting before the last frost date? When, you know, why wouldn't you just plant when everything is all clear? Well, you know it's all clear. Well, that's the other bad thing. This ties in. Here's a problem with the deep south. If you plant later, the weather heats up fast. Suddenly you're going from low 80s during the day to mid 90s during the day. And it often happens in a month or so. It's really fast. And so, if you wanted to grow potatoes and you said, you know what, I'm gonna wait until it's perfectly safe. We're not gonna freeze the tops of these potatoes off. So I'll plant them on April 1st. You're not really gonna get potatoes then because it's gonna warm up and your potatoes are just gonna die off and say, there's no way I'm making roots. It's not gonna happen. So your, your climate is going way too rapidly from freezing too hot and humid and buggy. So there's this game that you have to play in the south. It's like dodging a train. You try and get in front of it. And you gotta be ready to have your hopes and dreams crushed. Sometimes you plant two or three times before you get the one that survives. Because invariably, if you wait too long to plant, it's gonna get hot and buggy and humid and everything will start bolting or refuse to make roots for you or whatever else. You plant too late, you've missed it for that spring, it's over. But if you plant too early and you're not ready for that overnight low that's bound to come after 80 degree weather for Weeks, the whole garden's like, yes, spring. 
If you're not ready for that, you're in trouble. And you can never be fully ready for it, I don't think. I suppose you could spend a ton of money and grow in a greenhouse, but we don't roll like that. That's high effort and high money. But you can see the difference here. These are the ones we covered. They lost a little bit of the new growth. These are Adirondack blue potatoes. They lost a little bit of the new growth here. These, these here we ran out of sheets. So you can see what they look like. Are they gonna live? Yeah, they're gonna live. They'll still make us some potatoes probably, but those are not happy plants anymore. Even worse, I started uncovering tomatoes. That's a potato, that's a tomato. I don't know why, but I carefully covered these and they still died. Even worse, I had already lost my transplants, so I had to go buy some transplants. So these each cost me at least a buck each. I think these were actually $2.50 each. Starts to add up. Tried to protect it, did the best we could, but they're not, not flying. Let's see here, these ones we put under the sheet. That one's okay, that's a pepper, but this pepper is dead. So if we were to go around and tally up the economic damage, it would not be, it would not be a good thing to do. It would be depressing. So that pepper's dead, that pepper's dead, that pepper's dead, that pepper's dead. That pepper's alive for some reason. That's a magic pepper. This one looks like it may live. Sure doesn't look hot though. And that right there is the worst thing about growing in the deep south. You really almost have two growing seasons here. You have spring, which is that fight. Is it gonna freeze or is it not gonna freeze? Is it gonna freeze or is it not gonna freeze? And you gotta get ahead of it because it's gonna get too hot. But if you get too far ahead of it, everything dies. And you're kind of going back and forth, riding that edge. And then, when you get to the fall, it's hot, 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 hot. And then it starts to cool off a little bit. And you try to get in as much as you can. Try to get things that produce in 50, 60, 70 days maybe before the first freeze. And if you're lucky, and we don't get a freeze until after Thanksgiving or maybe even better after Christmas, which happens sometimes, you're in good shape. This year we had a great bunch of stuff out here and then suddenly, right around Christmas, it went down to 16 degrees and it was below freezing for over two days and that completely and utterly ended the gardens. But some years, you don't even get a real frost until February. It's a game. And the summer, there's hardly anything at all you can grow. It's not like up north when you can just wait until, oh, you know, it's the last frost-free date. It's gonna be a nice summer. We can grow some cabbages and potatoes in. Oh no, those things die in the summer. The only thing that wants to grow in the summer here is uh, black-eyed peas and okra and cotton. That's about it. And if you can live on that, please leave a comment below and tell me your recipes. <laughs> Gardening down in the tropics was incredible. It was, it was year round. I mean, we had a dry season, but if you had a little bit of irrigation, you could just perpetually grow. That was great. But I had to move back here and uh, you know, I did it for all of you guys. I came back and deliberately put myself under this, these difficult, circumstances, very difficult circumstances uh, as, a, as a sacrifice to help those of you who are very concerned about being able to grow enough food during the pandemic and beyond. And, uh, and I don't regret that choice. I think y'all are worth it. <laughs> Seriously though, um, we are blessed beyond anything that we deserve. Whether or not we get a frost or we don't get a frost, the Lord takes care of us. And 
we just start again and we put in a few more transplants and we plant a few more trees and we wait and see how the rest of the season pans out. There's always something to complain about, but as my, my mom would always tell us when we were kids, count your many blessings. If you count your many blessings, think about how many things that you're blessed with, there's, there's, your, your, just, your entire attitude is gonna turn around. And I am thankful for my wife, the videographer. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful that the weather is warming up. It looks like that was our last frost. I'm thankful that we've gone through that. I'm thankful for a place of my own at long last uh, that we can garden on and know that if we plant a tree, it's gonna stick around. And I mean, there's just so many things to be thankful for. So yeah, we all like to complain about the frosts. It is one of the most difficult things about trying to garden in this climate, that up and down and kind of getting used to it and, and, and play and dodge the train. But overall, we're totally blessed and it's a blessing to be here with you guys. So I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. And until I see you then, may your thumbs always be green.